Welcome to our review for topic set 15, derivatives and function characteristics. Now that we know what the first derivative and the second derivative are and how to solve them, we're going to look at what they mean for functions. So in the textbook, we're going to be looking at section 4.2, the mean value theorem. And within that section, we're going to look at how the first derivative is related to increasing and decreasing functions. We're also going to look at section 4.3, which is connecting f prime of x and f double prime of x with the graph of f of x. So within that, we're also going to look at critical values and points of inflections along with concavity. An important concept in analyzing graphs is the mean value theorem, or MVT, which states that if y equals f of x is continuous over the closed interval a, b, and differentiable over the open interval a, b, then at least one point on c exists on the open interval a, b, so that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. This concept should be familiar from our previous section and will not be covered in this video. So, when applying the MVT to a graph, if f prime is greater than zero at each point a, b, then f is said to be increasing on that closed interval. Also, if f prime is less than zero at each point, then f is said to be decreasing on the closed interval. So, what does this mean? Well, let's look at a simple graph, a parabola. Ta-da! With the power of movie magic, we've made a simple parabola up here. We have designated it f of x. We have selected a parabola because we know it satisfies both requirements of the NVT, that it is continuous and differentiable over all reals. You will need to justify this for all problems. Now, let's examine the interval a, b. We can clearly see from the graph that it has a negative slope on all points within the interval. And since the derivative is a slope at a point, we can conclude that f prime is less than zero. Therefore, according to what we just learned, f of x is decreasing over the interval a, b. We can do the same thing over the interval bc. Once again, we can see that the slope of the interval on all points is positive. Therefore, the derivative is positive, and also f of x is increasing over the interval bc. Now let's look at on graphical problems. Now we have a problem to solve without using the graph. g of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 12. This is just another parabola, but this time we're going to solve it using all calculus to find which areas of the graph are increasing and decreasing. First, we need to make sure that g of x satisfies the mean value theorem. So, since this is a polynomial function, we know that the domain is all reals. This instantly means that it satisfies the MVT and is differentiable and continuous over all reals. So let's go ahead and solve for the first derivative. We're going to use power rule to do that. First, let's try to find where this function is decreasing. Remember that the first derivative needs to be less than zero for the function to be decreasing. Therefore, we're going to set our first derivative of g of x to be less than zero and solve. What we get is x is less than one half, meaning that g of x is decreasing over the interval negative infinity to one half. This is an open interval because at the point x equals one half, g of x is changing from decreasing to increasing, or so we can assume right now. So let's look at that. Let's see where this function is increasing, which means where this function's derivative is going to be greater than zero. So in order to solve this, we're going to set the first derivative of g of x, or 2x minus 1, greater than zero. When we solve this, it turns out to be x is greater than 1 half, meaning that g of x is increasing over the interval one half to infinity. You may have noticed that at x equals one half, the graph of g of x appears to be both decreasing and increasing. The graph decreases when there's x values less than one half and increases when the x values are greater than one half. There's a special name for the point that occurs at x equals one half. It's called a critical point. A critical point is a point at which the first derivative changes signs, 
meaning the function itself changes slope. So we see that critical points can be extreme values in this example here. We can actually use the first derivative test to solve for which critical points can be extreme values. Let's practice. Let us start with the equation y equals x times the square root 9 minus x squared. First thing you want to do is check to see if the equation is continuous. Since there's a square root, we know the graph won't be continuous when 9 minus x squared is less than 0 because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So we set the square root of 9 minus x squared to be greater than or equal to 0 and solve for the domain. We get that the equation is continuous over the domain negative 3 to 3. Now that we have proven that the equation is continuous over the interval negative 3 to 3, we have to prove that it is differentiable over the open interval negative 3 to 3. To do this, we have to take the first derivative of the equation. You will need to use the product rule and the chain rule to solve this. The resulting equation is 9 minus 2x squared over the square root of 9 minus x squared. Now that the square root of 9 minus x squared is in the denominator, we know it can't be 0 or the equation will be undefined. So we have to set it greater than 0, excluding 0. Doing this, we have proved that the equation is also differentiable on the open interval and continuous on the closed interval. Now comes the fun part. We get to solve for the critical points. To do that, you set the first derivative equal to zero. Since we have a fraction, a shortcut method is to just set the numerator equal to zero because the denominator cancels out. Our solutions come to be this plus or minus square root of 9 over 2, which is roughly 2.12. Since this function is restrained over the interval negative 3 to 3, we will use the line test.